Guys, this video is brought to you by Mixing Key new pilot plugins. Three new super inspiring and easy to use plugins that can help you write and arrange music, no matter what your level is. You have Pilot Melody, Pilot Bass, and Pilot Arpeggio. They are super fun to use, but most important, they can give you instant ideas to write and arrange music, literally with a click of a button. For each one, you can set the chord progression that you want. You just click and it generates melody. bass and arpeggios. You put everything together For each one, you can export the MIDI or the audio because you have a bunch of virtual synths and sound. And it also recommends you what instrument to play with a given melody or a given bass line. You get the idea. Definitely check them out. Mixed in key, new pilot plugin series. All right, Q&A time with you guys. If you have questions for the Q&A, leave it in the comment down below. The best will be answered in a video. This one is from Tommy's Lab. What would be the most appropriate way to match compressor output level to avoid the infamous louder is better deception? Should input and output level be matched by peak RMS or LUFS? Does it make a difference for different types of material or compressor topology or even compressor parameters? This is an interesting question because level matching comes up a lot in the comment section of review videos of plugins or hardware or comparisons. And yes, it's my opinion that level matching changes for the type of processing that you're doing and what task you're trying to achieve. So I'm gonna expand the answer uh, to other processing, not just compression. Before going into the different metering scales, let's divide between the two main options. Do I level match by ear or do I level match by peak level. 99% of the time is one of these two options that I use to level match. I'm gonna take three of the most common processing that we use in mixing. Compression, EQ, and saturation. If I'm using compression, let's say on a vocal or a bass, I 99% of the time match by ear. I want the overall volume, the perceived loudness, whether I'm listening it in solo or inside a mix of a certain element, the element that I'm compressing, to be pretty much exactly the same with and without the compression. The reason is pretty logical and is in the question itself, because I don't wanna fool myself into believing that the compressed material is better simply because it's louder. It doesn't matter how much experience you have and how well trained you are, if something is louder and you A, B the two, it's just the nature of our brain. Your brain will tell you the louder is better. While, for example, if I'm compressing a vocal, and let's say I just want to control the dynamic, okay? I wanna lower the differences between the low energy passages and the high energy passages, so I want more density. I need the loudest passages to be at the same level with and without compression. At that point, I will understand if the low energy material is brought up to level and how the envelope, the attack and release, and how much I am compressing, it actually helps the track or not. When those high energy passages are at the same perceived loudness, then I will hear the low energy passages and I'll pay attention to those, are those brought up enough? How is the release? Is it spitting? Is it too fast? They are coming too aggressive up and down, or it's maybe too slow and they don't come up fast enough. So in order for me to assess all these details, attack, release, ratio, amount of compression, generally speaking, I need not to be distracted by a level difference, okay? Same with EQ. If I boost a frequency and I don't level compensate, doesn't, doesn't matter what frequency I'm boosting, the boosted version will appear better at first, at least. And it's the same on the opposite. Let's say I have too much low mids. If I cut it and I don't compensate for my cut, unless you are extremely well-trained and well-experienced, you will prefer the one without the cut, even if that track actually needs that region to be 
removed or attenuated. And when you do heavy moves on a single track on a group, it's easier. But when you do fine work, let's say on a two bus compressor where you knock down one or two dB or in mastering even less, you need to be very, very careful because all it takes is half a dB. Different case instead with saturation. But here, it depends what I'm using saturation for. I'll give you a practical example, it's easier. My analog hardware HG2. Beside the color and the density that it adds and the harmonic content, what is really great at is to reduce the peak, the nominal level of things. On a mix, usually it gets triggered by fast transients, kick and snare. In this case, if that's one of my purposes for using saturation, especially on a mix, is to have a better crest factor, all right? To set my machine, I usually loop the biggest chorus where there's the more energy. And I check the peak level of that section without the machine on, I turn it on, I start turning the knobs. And while I'm listening to how it sounds, if you like this video, guys, please consider using the super thanks and support the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you really want to learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mixbus TV member. Access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish mastering courses on many different genres and a lot more. And while I'm listening to how it sounds, I also also have reset my meter, my peak meter in this case, and I see how much I'm eating, how much peak level I'm able to eat on that given mix with several different settings, trying several different settings before it starts being too much. And remember, that's only one of my purposes, but it is one of my purposes. That's another reason because ergonomics of the analog are so important. No, it's not just about the sound because at the same time I can listen, I can look at my meter and I can turn my knobs. It's one movement, it's one thing, is it's perception of everything. In this case, depending on at what stage of my mix uh, I turn on the HG2, I want either the same peak level with a greater perceived loudness or I want the same loudness but with a lower peak level. Why it can be one of the two? It depends what comes after and if something comes after the HG2 in my two bus. For example, if I already set up my two bus compressor, attack release, amount of compression, okay? I don't want to mess with the peak level hitting that compressor because it could change the settings. It's not a big deal, I can still tweak it because I set my two bus processing, which involves several machines at the beginning of the mix. So it really is a, a small, let's say a 20 minutes window, which is like probably five or six mixing moves. But it can happen that I turn my compressor on first and then I decide, yeah, this mix needs the HG2 instead of the Neves and I have to tweak it. The other option comes where I don't care about that. I maybe don't have my two bus compressor set up yet and I just want more harmonic content, more color, and I don't really care about the peak level, although I still want it lower, but I don't care about bringing the level up and matching the peak. I hope that makes sense, but again, if you have questions, leave them in the comment down below. And here's an interesting bit that I'm gonna use every single time <laughs> someone posts a comment about level matching in any of my videos, like plugins demo, uh, comparisons, hardware reviews, anything. When you try to achieve exactly that with, a, for example, a saturator, okay? So reduce the nominal level so that you can push a mix more and make it louder with the same peak level because that's exactly what we are trying to do at that moment. I'm showing, hey, listen to the level difference given the same peak level. Some inexperienced people don't understand this and you can say their comments a mile away because they say, oh, this one is louder, you should have level matched. I did level match <laughs> by peak and what I'm showing is exactly the level difference given the same peak level. So this is a bit, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make a short out of it and then link to all of these comments. The only time in which I pay attention to the RMS or the LUFS is at the mastering stage. That's it, that's the only moment in which I pay attention to it. I didn't say I match it or I try to match it because honestly it happens probably once every 200 songs that I mix or master that a client tells me, uh, I don't know, I want this LUFS, that's my target. Which usually happens if the label give it to the artist and it's usually an EDM 
uh, and electronic music. I don't think, it, maybe a couple of metal songs that I did that, that I got uh, directions for the LUFS. But also I just take a look at it for a second because I don't think I've never had a reference that I wasn't able to surpass easily. So that's that, that was never a problem for me. But that would be the only time in which I reference or pay attention at all to RMS and LUFS. I never ever do that while mixing on single tracks or before or after a processing, whatever the processing is. I hope this answered the question. If you liked the video, please consider using the super thanks. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have questions for the Q&A, leave them in the comments down below. Stay safe. See you next time. Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat. Lift me up.